We're all about the archers. I'm Philippa and I'm joined today by Lauren, Quentin and Katie because we are talking, very excited about this, we are talking to the one and only Andrew Wincott who plays Adam. Our Adam. Andrew, welcome. Hello. Welcome. Hello, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for talking <laughs> it, to me. It's great to have many, you on. Many it, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now, OK, my first question, Andrew, <laughs> no, you have, you've been on the Archers for quite a while. What, what does being... About 20 years. Yeah, 20 years is a long time. 20 years time. This, this year. Wow. What Oof. does it mean to you being part of the Archers team? Ooh, ooh, it means um, it's a job. <laughs> no, it's a very good job. It's, uh, it, it means... <laughs> I don't know. It means the world in many ways because it is the world. It's a world of Ambridge and uh, a, a real world of, filled with real people that that uh, that every, everybody five million or more of us listen to drop in on every day. So it's great to be a part of people's lives and to be, I mean, really, really to be a part of the cultural fabric of the nation, because I think the Archers is exactly that. It's been with us for so long now, 70, what, two, 72 years I've been there a mere 20, but I think we're up, we're still, the UK is still a farming nation, uh, and that's where the roots definitely are and where Borsetshire is, in the sort of heart of the country, and um, and it's great to be connected to that heart, the still-beating heart of Ambridge. Well, congratulations on being on it for, for 20 years, Andrew. We Before we started recording, Thank you. we had a good old laugh with you and... Um, you're nothing like Adam, thank goodness, because I have to ask you. How dare um, you? What's wrong? Why? Because are you, are you, is... must, you must be aware that poor old Adam gets a lot of stick on the fan forums. For what? Will you tell me? Because I, I, yeah. What, well, what, what, do they, it's, what do they say? I, They're talking it, behind my back. They are <laughs> in, in full sight on social media. Uh, it's the moaning and sighing. Hidden in full sight. It's moaning and sighing. It's, it's the... Yeah, that's what that's what people uh, moan. They moan about your your moan. Uh, Adam's moaning and sighing, really, Andrew. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, no moaning from me. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, do the do the script writers include Adam's sighs as stage directions, or is that something that you've actually adopted over the years? I, I people have talked about the sighing generally. I think in the Archers for a long time. Somebody once edited together all the size in from one program and it was very funny so i don't think it's only adam that does that but yeah we do have to breathe um which means you know which means a certain amount of exhalation and believe it or not size can be quite expressive because you've got a <clears throat> kind of sigh and then you've got a <clears throat> kind of and then you've got a <clears throat> you know stop it no you've got um I think size can be expressive, but if Adam's over sighing, but I think to to address the general thing that that he uh, perhaps um, what was the other one moaning was it no uh, he, he does can, moan quite no. a bit doesn't he was the other moaning moan a bit yeah well I think there has been a change because yes I think if I could defend my alter ego can I do that this is a, <laughs> says it's okay you sure yeah uh, he so. I I, th I think um, I think Adam's had quite a bit to moan about, really, uh, especially when he's been in in contention and constant argument with you know, locked horns with Brian at home farm, and uh, you know it 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 hasn't been easy, but I don't know what would life be if we didn't have something to moan about, um, but I think. Things have been tough, but now he's at Bridge Farm. Bridge Farm seems to be more of a natural fit. I've always felt yeah. that, yeah, yeah. really. And and what was was it a year or so ago when, or more, no, more than that, when he moved over there, over to start working at Bridge, and um, and he was getting the approbation from David that he never got from Brian, and it was sort of a shock, really. And then it was quite interesting. The particular episode I'm thinking of. Well, Tom sort of came in, and sort of, you know, then his nose was put out of joint. So there was quite an interesting dynamic there. It was Tom saying, why are you listening to him, Dad? You never listen to me. And that's that's life. Yeah. That yeah. really is families. That's the dynamic yeah. in, uh, in yeah. many families, I think. <laughs> so I think Bridge wow. is a natural fit, and I think he does have a, 
that maybe is a breezier tone to him now and a yeah. lighter lighter footstep I don't know if you've noticed that have you noticed yeah, that no, we, no but I, we have I have yes he seems a happier fellow there happier much yeah. happier I think so <laughs> yeah I've, with Ian's I've pizzas been... who wouldn't be <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um, I've been listening to the Archers for about eight or nine years I haven't been there for the full 20 years of your career Andrew but so I wasn't there at the beginnings of um, Adam and Ian could you remind the listeners and, and give me a little potted history of how they ended up getting together well, if you it, remember memory going back 20 years <laughs> uh, what happened well, well Adam, Adam came back from Africa because he was working on third world projects there um, on um, yeah so he came back from Africa and then um, he, he sort of came out shortly after that. Jennifer suspected, thought that that that, that was the case, um, probably knew for years, but it was the first time that Adam had talked about it. And then I think it was the following year, not not as much as a year, I don't think, that Ian came to work. Ian Craig came to work at Grey Gables and was staying with uh with with Peggy and so Adam came round and um I think they met in the kitchen of course at Peggy's <laughs> something was burning and uh you know and the rest is history they they just met met there and hit it off and they first oh, kissed lovely. in the polytunnels oh is that romantic. right romantic. Adam's saying it's Adam's <laughs> agreeing right. Yeah, yeah. Adam he saying, remembers yeah, it yeah. well. Yeah, he says the kiss was a bit squelchy, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, was it? Yeah. That was quite fun, actually. The kissing in the polytunnels. Yeah, we had to get oh. the kiss right. Yeah, yeah. There was a pause after the scene. We had the scene after which the script did say, "Don't sigh, kiss, uh, kiss with a sigh, kiss without a sigh, uh, kiss meaningfully," um, and uh, and 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 then after. At the end of the scene, there was a pause, and Stephen, Ian, and I were sort of chatting there, and we put our nails. And, How was it for you? Okay, mm. you know, we do it later. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the one of those pauses. So we're waiting for the studio, the control room, to come in and say whether it was okay or not. And the director said, um, "Yeah, yeah, that was some um, great guys. Uh, we got to do the kiss again." So you got to do the kiss again, because we really did it. We really kissed. Oh, you know, we are, yeah, we've we'd, been we'd... told. We've been told that it's a hand smooth. Oh, you hand. can do that. Well, yeah. that is traditionally what happens on radio. Absolutely. But we try to we try to make things as real as possible. Oh, good. And oh. and if you're, I mean, this is two thousand and four. That yeah. the case, I think. We uh, we, I remember doing a bodice ripper for radio drama around that time, and I was literally tearing cloth. You know, somebody's. The the actor was wearing a practice skirt, and I was ripping, really ripping. The, so we try to. I mean, I always contend this is. An, I'm getting off track here, but that radio is a very physical medium, and we try to make it as real as possible. So the kiss, we we discussed it, and I said, yeah, people kiss the back of their hands. That's, but the but the director said, no, no, guys, go for it. No, no, no. you should go for it. I said, oh right, okay. So uh, I said to Stephen, are you okay with that? And uh, looked at him and said, we could have shaved. And, uh, and, um, we, uh, um, and we did. So to come back into the, the moment, we kissed and then waited. Great guys, we've got to do the kiss again. Why, what, 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 how was the scene? Oh, the scene was fine, don't worry about the scene. No, it's the kiss, we've got to do the kiss again. Why? Well, don't take this the wrong way, guys, but it was a bit squelchy. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Nothing says romance like a big squelchy kiss. Exactly, exactly. I you think... were getting on squelchily and famously. You don't have scenes with lots of people. Adam's not on um, a committee. He's not involved in the drama productions. In some ways, he's a bit of a loner mm. without Ian. Is that something you feel playing him as well? I, I think it, it vaguely um, occurred to me, but then I don't know how other people fare mm. in that regard. Uh, how sociable other characters are. Now that you've mentioned it, I'm worried, <laughs> Adam. Um, 
<laughs> but I, I, I mean, he he has scenes. With, I, I've always thought that most people have scenes with their immediate friends or family. So Brian, uh, certainly the sisters, not uh, depending on where the stories are, but um, yeah, Alice. I think he's had quite a quite a lot of scenes with Alice, you know, Ian and yeah, but I haven't seen David on air, as it were, for a long time. We used to see more of each other, David and Ruth. So I don't know. You, I suppose now you've mentioned it, yeah. You need to be petitioning. Casual scenes in the ball. Yes. Casual and scenes in the ball, but. Um, and bridge, yeah. So, Interesting point. I mean, talking of that, Andrew, who you sort of um, have scenes with, I mean, any listener to this podcast will know that uh, about my unbridled love for Brian as a character. Um, I will defend Ooh. him to the hilt um, because he's my favourite character by far. But uh, So you oh, have I'm... loads of scenes with him, but also with another huge favourite, of course, uh, Debbie, played by Tamsin Gray. Yes. Um, so you're a lucky, you're a lucky fellow, aren't you, to, to have scenes with those two great actors? Absolutely. Well, I, I would say I'm lucky, and Charles and, and I have talked about this many times, we're lucky to have the actors in the family that we mm. had. You know, yeah. and lovely Angie, who we lost really from the show. Um, we loved doing the, the dynamics were so much fun in mm. the in the Aldridge, in the Aldridge house, and uh, and I love the interaction. I love the scenes with Kate and, and yes. Alice, the the the, yeah. mm. uh, the uh, sibling yeah. friction. But um, but I am lucky, absolutely. The the scenes the scenes with Debbie were a gift, always a gift. Mm. And Charles and I have a great rapport. Yes. So I, yeah. I, I don't feel left out in any way. I, I feel I feel the scenes are brilliantly written for the Aldridges and for um, for Adam and Ian. So, uh, but yes, mm. in answer to your question, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky. <laughs> do, 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 you, do, you, do you miss not, not being able to be at home farm anymore? And, you know, as, as a family? Well, I, I think they they are still a family. He's still a partner at hmm. Home Farm. But, you know, the kitchen and all that, and Jenny in the kitchen. And... Yeah, yeah. Well, in... it's early days in a way, but yes, um, I do miss, I do hmm. miss mum. Yeah, miss miss not having her there, hmm. not not being able to share things with her. Yeah. Because she, surprised... always, she, always, she always stuck up for Adam. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And... and and in the home farm mix, we've now got Stella. Mm. Yeah. And that's been an interesting relationship. Yeah. yeah. Because initially they they hit it off and they've looked out they looked after the, the dog while she was away. Adam encouraged her to go away. But then there was the story about the um that very expensive drill. <laughs> which all happened when Jenny <laughs> just after Jenny died. No. And Adam said, um, "Well, you've really got to look after the place now. You've got to make decisions." <laughs> Goodbye. Yes. Um, yeah, it was quite. Yeah. It was quite a scene, wasn't it? A few weeks ago, when Brian told Adam that he loved him. I mean, that's that yeah. sort of stopped me in my tracks. I think it stopped Adam in his tracks, didn't it? They were beautiful scenes, actually. Mm. Yeah, those scenes. They went to the races, didn't they? Yeah. Um, and uh, I think there's a new. I think it's very. See, the story moves on, moves on through time. And uh, there's a new relationship between them now. The stepfather, stepson relationship mm. is much warmer, more nuanced. I mean, they're not squabbling so much mm. at the farm. Um, they probably would always disagree because their farming principles are very different. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, there's a gr much greater warmth. I mean, they they would. There was a scene. We sat down. We were drinking whiskey, um, which wasn't really whiskey. I'm sure you. Yeah. Of course. Shocked. Yes. <laughs> yes, we were drinking one of one of Brian's single malts. <laughs> yes, I seem to recall. But, but yeah, there was a. There was a, yeah, a tenderness, a warmth. Yeah. I mean, two yes. men, two men, genuinely enjoying one another's company, yeah. hmm. and the emotion, of losing losing jenny hmm. yeah bonding through that yeah yeah 
Mm. Different dimension. Mate- Maybe this nuance. is something you could ask um, Adam as he's there with you. Um, but do yeah. you do you he's find it easy? To me now. Oh, he's, he's not just sitting okay. there sighing. You know. <laughs> do you find it easy to get into the Adam character, or do, do you just turn up and let's go? Or is there things you have to say? Or I mean, I think, I think, it's because I've known Adam for twenty years. It's. Um, it's second nature. It's it's like uh, what well, he's he's like a. I'm sure we all feel this in the in the show, but it's like um, they're a part of the characters are a part of us. It, it, he's yeah. never very far from him, and I find myself. It's interesting, Quentin, when you talk about defending Brian. I find myself defending Adam. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I bet. You know, if, I, if I'm having if I'm having lunch with my family, and you know Adam's been misbehaving. As he's, 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 I think Adam's very human. You know, he's flawed, <clears throat> and but he's also principled as a farmer. His farming ideals, mm-hmm. I think, are, 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 are good. You know, mm-hmm. he, he realised how that the soil was in wonderful expression. I think it was bad heart or something. I want to put the soil after the flood a few years back. He uh, and he went to talk to David. How's the soil at at uh, Brookfield? It was uh, soil's fine here, but at, at at home farm it wasn't. It was damaged because of all the intensive farming. Mm. So that's when he he went into, into went into the uh, exploring the herbal lays and brought the herbal lays to home farm. So, but a wonderful expression I remember. He wanted to put the soil back into good heart. It's almost Shakespearean. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and so, but he is. But Adam as a character is flawed, as we all are. You know, and um, uh, so what, where, where did I come into this? What was the question you asked? Um, uh, do you just get straight into the character? Or do oh, you, yeah, that's is right. there like a process you have to do in order to get into Adam's he, character? He's never very far from the surface. So, no, I don't have to, I don't, you know, you, it's all there in the wonderful scripts. Mm. So all I have to do is bring them off the page. You um, bring the words off the page. Um we we've been playing the characters for so long. I've been playing Adam now, yeah, yeah. for long enough. That I bet you do uh, feel like you know them, and you like when when storylines come along, you think, oh, Adam would like this, or Adam wouldn't like this. Like, do you feel like that? that? A, would we do feel that? Yeah, and there are certain things that we feel are more characteristic. But then, but then the thing is, look, we're all contradictory people. Um, there are inconsistencies, and that's what makes life and certainly drama interesting so you play those contradictions Mm. we all talk to people in different ways the way we relate to different characters as you pointed out adam doesn't have so many to relate to so but um (laughs) which i'm now worried about but uh he he um we you do talk to people in different ways we use different registers uh and and it's all there it's all there in the writing so you you always look for the truth of the moment, whether it be in 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 radio or in theatre or in any other medium. Um, it's just so interesting to me because you have you know this long term role in the Archers, which is massive, and then also you're massive as a voice in computer games. You know people are, are always wanting to hear interviews with you and hit and play the games that you voice over. Those are two quite different roots i do they how do you deal with those differences are there any crossover fans at all well i don't know if there are crossover fans i would think there may not be many <laughs> because because i mean you, you may be referring to Baldur's gate 3 which people are now talking about as being one of the biggest games in the world which came out only in august and uh, for people who don't know that, I'm playing a character called Raphael, uh, who is, to all intents and purposes, the devil, but a rather smooth and charming one. Adam's looking very worried <laughs> over there now. Um, but he he, uh, he he's very charismatic, but but he's also rather dangerous. But people seem to be attracted by that. And there's there's one of those contradictions that's so fascinating to play. You know the 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 charming devil mm. who can seduce and manipulate, but on the surface, he's your best friend. 
he's going to do a deal he's going to help you but, but you um, don't as far as the tie-in i don't know it's quite a dark and specific world yeah. uh the dungeons and dragons world which doesn't immediately evoke <laughs> evoke farming in the midlands yeah. not so go. much crossover who knows <laughs> who knows i wasn't at any halloween parties this year people may have been dressed as uh, Raphael. <laughs> you, you haven't turned up to record as Raphael and suddenly um, you've been Adam by mistake. Strangely, no. No. Strangely, no. Uh, but, but you know, the, look, it's... What can I say? I mean, you know, the, the characters are, are just there. They're all in the mix. Uh, I, I mean, in radio... Uh, one in the, in the radio drama company, one would be playing characters all the time, but you uh, you learn to make very quick decisions about the characters. You find the characters. Obviously, the voice is the most important thing. The difference with uh, with uh, Raphael is that it was motion capture, so it's capturing. You were wearing a bodysuit with light reflectors that are mapping your movements and then put into the software. So it's quite an elaborate. I haven't. I hadn't done a motion capture game before so it's quite an elaborate process but in another way it was like returning to theater because you're you were acting in three dimensions and you could gesture and physicalize which we do anyway on the arches mm. we physicalize we gesture we make approaches from some distance we retreat back to another distance we've got in the what we call the dead room the acoustically at the outdoor space the, where there's no absolutely no echo at all we have a we have what we call the snail which is a tunnel that enables us to approach from around a couple of corners which sounds like we're two fields away it's very ingeniously designed yeah, very, yeah. yeah. i don't know if you and, knew and, all that so. no i didn't <clears throat> we've got really... acoustic spaces in studio we have a live acoustic uh, which is for sort of village halls or um, barns, that kind of thing. We've got um, a kitchen ac acoustic, which literally has an auger and um, a running sink and a microwave and a kettle. If uh, if it's a breakfast scene, Ness, our, who's generally our studio um, FX, um, you'll walk into the studio and there's this wonderful smell of toast. Toast. <laughs> oh. And we really get to eat it. <gasps> That's know, worth signing nibble, up for the job it. alone, isn't it? The free toast. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Free. <laughs> yeah. Ask any actor. Um, and then we have a sort of office or bedroom acoustic with a sofa bed, which really does convert to a bed. And if it's a bed scene, you'll be in it. Oh. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Um, Andrew, Sorry. If if, yep. if 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 you lived in Ambridge, I as do. You. I do. I, I, I do. But I mean, Quinton. What? I, but if if Andrew Wincott rather than Adam lived yeah. in Ambridge, which of course exists, obviously. Who, who would, which Ambridge characters would you seek out for a, a, a good night out? Oh, a good night out. Um, well, I'd have to, you'd have to qualify what you mean by good night out. Do you mean a raucous night out? Yeah, fun. Uh, you know, good, loads of laughs, a um, few drinks, um, that sort of thing. I didn't know the Cider Club used to be quite fun. Um, Eddie, oh, the Grundys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Adam went once or twice to that. Um, <laughs> he, uh, I think Adam had a great relationship with with Ed when he was working at uh, at Home Farm. Um, but but there was that difficult moment when he had to let Ed go. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're fascinating those scenes where you've yes. got that, that moral those moral quandaries. Um, yeah, good night out. Well, you know, jazz is always good for a laugh. Absolutely. Um, you know. What What about uh, Kate? Oh, well, uh, uh, yeah. Kate's the sister we all love to hate. Yeah, I love her. <laughs> love to hate Kate. Yeah. No, Kate's so annoying, but, but yes. so lovely and adorable and, you know, incorrigible. Yeah. I, I should tell you also, talking about living in Ambridge, um, I... I uh, was born in Banbury in Oxfordshire and uh, my mother grew up on a farm in in a village called Sibford Ferris, which is about seven miles from Banbury. She grew up on a farm called Home Farm. <laughs> oh. And she went to a school in Sibford Ferris where a certain Godfrey Baisley had also been to school. Godfrey Baisley 
who created oh, of course a show yeah. called The Archers. Yes, yes, yes. So for me, The Archers really, uh, I mean, this also comes back to the how easy is it for me to play Adam. It's like going home, really. Mm. Uh, it's like putting on a very familiar suit or, or shirt or something, you know. Uh, it really, it really is. It's, um, I've still got family in the area and, uh, yeah. And family roots in, in the Birmingham area too. So for me, it, it really is going home. It's wonderful. Um, it's a, it's a curious lovely. crossover between, which you sometimes get to, between art and life. I've always what? felt at home in Ambridge. And years uh -huh. ago, I played a, you may know this, I played Torkil, the uh, Danish agricultural studio, yeah. student who worked on Bridge Farm and annoyed Tony <laughs> by knowing more about organic farming than he did. <laughs> and then one day, Adam flooded the irrigation and Tony thought, I've got him, I've got him at last, I can get one over on him. And it turned out that he was rescuing Sharon's, who was it? Was it, was it Kylie or so? I can't remember now. Um, and uh, yeah, I think Jill's bees had swarmed across the, had escaped and swarmed across the county. It was like an episode from a go gothic a hammer horror thing. The swarm, <laughs> the bees were swarming, and Adam was uh, not Adam, Freudian slip. Uh, Torkel was a hero. Yeah. Yes, Tony, I was having to rescue Kylie. <laughs> so you know, Tony had to back down. Yes. So, Andrew, we before you go, we've got some questions from the All About the Archers Facebook group for you, if you're ready and prepared for these. Quick, is this a quick fire round? I just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, go quick, on, Quickish, quickish. Yeah. Is he gay? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Does he like Brian? No. I mean, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's Is it then. You, you, pizza? Oh, that's you've the answered, end of it. You've answered yeah, yeah. all. And... Yeah. What's your favourite pizza? Blue. No, red. No, what? <laughs> Well, there is one here that you might not have uh, anticipated, Andrew, from Annie. And she says, the ambitious, conscientious, forward-planning Adam that we got to know so well during those years of wrangling with Brian at home farm, how does he really feel about his current role at Bridge Farm? He sounds happier. He seems more relaxed. But is he really? I'm not convinced, says Not Annie. convinced? Well, yeah. I, would like to, I would like a phone-in call on that. I would like to discuss that. Uh... <laughs> I, I, I think he is happy. I think he is happy with it. I mean, when he introduced the the edible forest idea, uh, it, it, I think it was it was um, he sort of well introduced the asked the question, would it be okay if? And the response to his great surprise was, yeah, sure, yeah. What's wrong with that? You know, mm -hmm. whereas with Brian, it would be, oh, well, I don't know. I mean, where, what, why, when, who, you? How much? You know, yes, how much? Five, what, thousand, what, million, what? No, um, you you do what? You eat the... Um, farming's about eating? Since when? But, yeah, uh, I, I think things are much, much easier, and, uh, and I think that, that genuinely pleases him. There was an interesting moment when... The suggestion was, would would he, should he go back to home farm and introduce those things? And who knows? And who knows? In the fullness of time, maybe he will. But probably, when Brian finally decides to take a several steps back, um, there's always there's all, there are always going to be questions. He's he's not left home farm. He's still it's still the family farm, and he's still a partner there. But I think that he's. I think he is happy. Okay. With with the yeah, with um, being at Bridge. Okay. Well, we've been talking a lot about pizza. Angie's got a question. Pizza is also on her mind. She says she'd like to ask Andrew if he thinks, given that his husband is a pizza toting top class chef, does Ooh. he think that Adam has a typical farmer's physique, as Angie has it in mind that Ian rations his grub. Rations Adam's grub. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, it is interesting if they're eating gourmet food, and uh, I don't know, not too many. Well, yeah, they don't live on pizzas. No. But when when Adam came to, to, to when Adam, sorry, yeah, what do they look like? What do they look like now? Because when <laughs> when when Adam came back to Ambridge, he was a gym guy. You know, he was he was going down the gym, and uh, yeah. you know 
take your shirt off, rippling muscles and all of this. <clears throat> so I don't know if he's gone softer over the years. Doesn't get talked about much. No. Um, but I, I think Ian would make sure, they both would make sure they're eating healthily. I would say. I, I think that's uh, that's the answer, which may mean, yeah, not overdoing it. Keeping the portions, you know, keeping the portions reasonable. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We eat less as we get older, don't we? Do you find that? I don't no. I don't find that at all. <laughs> no. No, Andrew. No. That is not an issue for me <laughs> at all. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, don't, don't get her onto biscuits. <laughs> uh, the next question wow. is from Pam talking about food um, if you could be magicked into real life with three characters past or present from the archers who would you invite to dinner par to the dinner party and what would you serve them I mean that's quite a long question gosh but... these are difficult these are yes. difficult questions <laughs> so um, which, which three characters past or present from the archers would you have for dinner past or present um, well, I, I mean, I think Brian would have to be there. Yeah. Brian would have to be there um, because he's he's good value and he'll bring that single malt. You know, he, he'll, <laughs> you know, one of you, raid his wine cellar. <laughs> um, maybe Nelson would would be there. You know, yes, marvellous. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Nelson? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Got to be, got to be good value. Uh how far back? Well, I don't know. Um, I'm I'm struggling with the third. Don't but, worry, Pink well, Adam. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, Mum. It's got to be. Oh. God, Mum would have to be there if Brian's yeah. going to be there. Mum's got to be there. Yeah. And then Nelson right. for good value. Okay. Yeah. Um, Andrew, we got two related questions here. <clears throat> uh, what the first comes from Monica. And she says, please compliment Adam slash Andrew on his voice, which I really love. OK. And then oh, she you. says, do the actors get the chance to put forward ideas about their roles and plot developments in general? Any examples when this has worked for Andrew? And just bring you in the second question. This is from D. He, she says, has he had any input in the scripts to ensure that Adam and Ian, these are her words, stay a boring couple who have a house, jobs and a kid? who just happen to be gay and don't evolve into a stereotypical gay couple. So essentially, is it, do you have an input into, the, into your characters and scripts? What's a stereotypical be? gay couple? That's, that's a lesson love. I don't know. You might I end think, up, you know, doing drag like, you know. Yes, I think she was savage. thinking. Love, yes, love. I, think, I, think she was th I think she was meaning get over dramatic and, you know. Stereotypical, in other words, yeah. Adam and Ian have always been. Um, we've, all, you know, they're, they're just they're just two guys. We we don't, um, yeah. There, there's all. They've just been two two guys who love each other, and it's the longest running gay relationship in any continuing story, as as far as I'm aware. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think there's any plan for them to suddenly start sort of camping it up, um, or or you know dragging it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, uh, dragging them into um, uh, the uh, trans or whatever world, or I don't know. I'm just you know the 21st century. No, they're just guys. They're just people who love each other, mm. and just but, and just two guys. So yeah. Do you have any say? What both Monica and Dia want? Do you have any say? Any input into your character development? Well, well it, <clears> only <throat> in in the way that we all do. If if we feel the characters are you know they'll there may be a discussion but the but we're not we're not privy to the script we don't go to the script meetings we we're not part of that wider discussion as a general rule uh, okay. none of us are i mean you know i'd love to be at a script meeting frankly can you imagine the actors turning up pitching ideas i've got a great idea this is a good one for you know, adam and ian this is what they could. no um but but when we're in studio, it is a creative thing, and uh, adjustments are made, tweaks are made, um, some more easily than than not. But it is a negotiation; it's a creative process. Uh, I can tell you that when Adam and Ian got together, I had a conversation, just a just a casual conversation with um, 
one of the producers. And uh, the question was, where do you see the relationship going? Well, I said, you can do, I suppose you can go in one of three different ways, which you can either split them up. So the relationship's just casual, here, here today, gone tomorrow. You could, um, at this time, civil partnership was not was not uh, a possibility, not an option, but it may have been, this is about 2004, five, it was brought in, I think, then, and, and they, but I think in uh, Denmark or, or in Scandinavia, it, generally, it was a possibility. So I said, you could explore that. So you make them a more permanent couple. And in fact, it did become legal in 2006. And that's when we did have the civil partnership. And then in about 2015, they were actually married when um, David Cameron brought it in. Uh, and uh, the, the third thing I said was you could explore the surrogacy adoption thing, that, that they actually tried to, um, you know, bring up a child together. And they did visit the story in 2007. A friend of Ian's was brought in. Do you remember this? And yeah. um, Maddie, wanted Mads. to... M M Mads, that's Mads. right. M yeah, Murray. Yeah, Mads. And... Um, <coughs> wanted Ian to father a child with her. They were old friends. And Adam wasn't keen on the idea then. Yeah, Adam was not keen. So, and then scroll forward 10 years and things change. So, I don't know, it's, it's they're sort of, it wasn't as if I was influencing the character, but we were discussing, we were discussing what the options were. Yeah. We, and, and so all those things, well, they, they they sort of didn't split up, but they came close to it, actually. Yeah. Because Adam was tempted. Charlie tried to lure him away. Mm. Yes. And he did have a one night with one of the pickers. Yes. Mm. Mm. But he was one kind of on the, the rebound. Pickers. Kind It'd of on, do you remember all this? Mm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So Rob has also got a question. So he loves you as hard uh, is this, done by Adam. Is this Adam. Rob Titchener? <laughs> yeah. What Rob does he Titchener's want? Rob Titchener's been on the phone. I don't think we want <laughs> questions from Rob, do we? I don't know, but it could be an interesting one. We'll see what he has to say. Well, Maybe he, he's going to he convert loved, me. Rob Titchener loves you as Adam, um, <laughs> but also loves you as sexy bad boy Simon in Claire in the Community. Where do I you know. see yourself on the spectrum of uh, Adam? and sexy bad boy Simon. Oh, well, you know, get me on the right day. I'm anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm either. And he hasn't even brought in Raphael, has he? No. <laughs> From the Baldur's Gate world, yeah. Wonderful. Well, Andrew, we have yeah. just loved talking to you. We really have. It's been wonderful, honestly. It's just brilliant. We're so grateful Thank you. For it's been time. great fun. It's been great fun chatting you. to you. Thank you so much. Thank you ever so much, Andrew. It's been great. You're very welcome. Thanks for those. <laughs> thanks for those tricky questions. It's, <laughs> it's got me thinking now. As soon as we've we've hung up our headphones, I'll be going. Ah, I know what I should have said. <laughs> I know who I'll have to the dinner party. Yes, of course. It was obvious. <laughs>